What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Love Unscripted Podcast. I'm your host, Joseph Wilson, and this is the podcast where we have unscripted conversations with millennials about relationships and dating. So I hope you all are having a good start to the new year. Hopefully you are taking full advantage of another day of life that you've been given. And guess what? Whatever happened last year is in the past. It's in the past. So let's go ahead and take a new perspective going into this new year about relationships. What is it that we could do differently? Let's really try to take full advantage of a fresh start that we're given to be able to do something different. Because like we say, relationships matter, whether platonic or romantic. And our goal is to constantly like try to get better at relationships. And sometimes we just need to be able to let go of what happened in the past. And I think a new year's help us get that fresh start. I know I'm energized. I'm really excited for some things that are going to be happening with this podcast. Like we have some really dope guests who are going to be joining us to be able to have more conversations about relationships and dating. Like we don't have all the answers. Like, honestly, I don't, I don't know anyone who does, but one of the things I really value is being able to talk to other people and get their perspectives and hear their experiences and learn how they were over to, able to overcome relationship hurdles. I love listening to our elders talk about how they made it over, how they overcame by and by, as they would say. But I think the, there's so much power in the conversation. So we're going to continue to have conversations with some great guests. We have a lineup that is going to be out of this world and going to be really enjoy, enjoyable, yet informative. You know, we like to have fun. But we're also about bringing the education because we don't like to just come out here and just talk. We want real practical tools that help us to be able to improve our relationships and also help us be better. Also, if you guys haven't heard or you've been under a rock, we have started a relationship community called Wake Up in Love, where you will have access Monday through Friday every morning to licensed therapists, certified relationship coaches, and we are going to present, teach, and have community with people who want to be better in their current relationship, whether they're trying to figure out how to date or if you want to take your relationship from good to great, like wherever you're at in this relationship journey, we have a space for you. So if you're interested, head on over to wakeupandlove.com. And that's where you can join the community Monday through Friday, people who really want to be better in their relationships. So to start off this year, I want to kind of go back to a philosophy, a way of thinking that I feel was something that I kind of uh, started, but I don't feel like we really hit it all the way. Like we didn't drive the nail home. And I'll go ahead and start off this way. We know society and social media has been really, really heavy on this idea of couple goals. Those people are relationship goals. And we have put couples up on a pedestal so much so that we don't expect them to do any wrong or it causes us to have unrealistic expectations of our own relationship. I don't know if you've been paying attention to the news or if you're on social media, but couples are getting divorced left and right. It's happening literally every single day. Marriage is not a sure thing. It is not guaranteed to last. We know people take vows for better, for worse, rich or poor, sickness and in health. But sometimes people still decide to go their own separate ways. And what that has tended to do, especially with the millennial age range, like I know we used to look up to people. We used to look up to certain couples and say, man, I want to be like them when I grow up or I want to model their type of relationship. All to all for it to come crashing down. Our hopes are dashed and we feel as though, man, is relationships even worth it? Is marriage even worth it? Like are people even is it worth it is the real thing. Is marriage worth it anymore? And I think going into the new year, especially with the idea that many people have of setting goals, I think it's time that we come up with some new relationship goals. We need some new ones, like, because 
what we have seen from other people is not sustainable, nor is what they did. Maybe that may not always be applicable to our situation. So last year I came up with a something I like to call real relationship goals. And we're going to briefly go over them. And the, and the goal is these are relationship goals that are about you. They're about you. Throughout my many years of doing therapy with couples and singles, I have found, and the research also supports this idea that if you want the collective relationship to be better, each individual person who is in the relationship must also grow, must also learn new skills, must also have more self-awareness. It starts on an individual level. So these goals are going to help you whether you are single, you're in a committed relationship, or even if you're married. And I, I came up with these. And like I said, after going through my own divorce, I was able to really put these goals into practice. And I feel so much better now. Um, my outlook on love is probably even stronger than it was before because the love that I have for myself is the springboard for, for the love that I'm able to give other people. So let's run down some of these and see how they can help us. I'm going to give them um, an example of how to do each one. And the first one is we have to rediscover ourselves. Now, I don't care how old you are. There comes a time in our life where we start to drift away from our true essence, whether we take on the identity, uh, the identity of provider, uh, employee, boss, a uh, mother. Um, now you're a boyfriend. Now you're a girl. Whatever it is, we're always taking on different roles. And sometimes these roles tend to turn into our identity. The challenge with that is that although being these different or having these different titles or being part of these different roles is part of who you are. It is not the essence of who you are. It is extremely important for us to always be spending time with ourselves, becoming more self-aware so that we can show up as the best version of ourselves in the world. We always talk about on the podcast that there are people who, what we like to call chameleons, they tend to um, shape shift and kind of try to be whatever the person they're dating says that they want in a partner. And that can be tricky because one, we don't know the real them. And if you're the chameleon, it is probably exhausting having to keep up with all these different masks and things. Relationships are no different. We have to learn how to rediscover ourselves within the context of a relationship and just who we are as individuals. Rediscover yourself. Make that one of your goal. The second one, we got to heal thyself. Heal thyself. We're talking about real relationship goals. Heal yourself. We have all been through challenging situations and circumstances in our life. We all have been through storms or we may even currently be in a storm. Regardless of what you've been through, it is your responsibility to heal from your experiences so that you can be the best version of yourself. Not It, it don't even got to be within the context of a relationship. It, it's just overall beneficial for you to go on a healing journey, learn how to not let the pain dictate your decision making. It can inform it by letting you know what you do and don't like, but it should not be the governing factor as far as how you're doing your relationships. Because what happens is when we live from, when we do our relationships from a hurt perspective, we automatically, we, we, we what is it called? You pretty much, you project some of your past hurts. You make assumptions about people that may not be true. And you don't really give your current relationship a chance because you're living from pain that you once had. And pain and trying to date why you're in pain or why you don't yet understand your pain will cause you to make some decisions that you may not have made otherwise. So I know it, it just because I'm a therapist doesn't mean that I, I feel that therapy is the only form of healing. Therapy is a good place to start, but there are also other methods um, such as support groups are beneficial. Finding 
um, some type of discipline, whether it's art and music, these can be very healing. Journaling is a form of healing, writing out your thoughts, wrestling with prompts on a piece of paper and seeing what comes out. That can be very healing. No matter what method you take, just go on the journey. I can't tell you how long it's going to take. I can't tell you whether or not um, you'll find your uh, the one once you start healing. But what I can say is you'll feel a lot better. You'll be at peace with yourself. You'll be at peace with the person in the mirror. You'll be okay in your own skin. And you'll see that your mentality about life, about your journey will change for the better. So be willing to heal thyself. Number three, encourage thyself. Now, this one is extremely important because you have to be the one to manufacture the encouragement. You have to be the one to inform your brain on how you should act and how you should be. Because so many people are used to negative self-talk, it can be difficult to find ways to pump yourself up. We cannot always expect encouragement, words of affirmation to come from an external source. This is really challenging for those who are in relationship and need that validation from somebody else. And when someone doesn't validate them, they start to question whether or not they are worthy of the relationship they're in or if they're worthy to be in this work position if the validation doesn't come from outside. But what I want you to be able to do is to really be encouraged from within. Now, that takes time. That's going to take practice. It's not something that even comes easy or it may even feel natural, but you have to get used to encouraging yourself. One of the things that I do is I use a whiteboard marker and I write affirmations on my mirror so that every time I wake up, I go in the bathroom, I see them there. I am reminding myself that hey, I am worthy. I do have a space and a position in this world. I do have a purpose. Saying those things to yourself constantly is going to better, is going to help improve your self-esteem, is going to help your self-image, and it'll just be a different kind of headspace compared to one that is always filled with negative self-talk. Your voice needs to be the voice you hear most often. And I'm not sure if a lot of people take the time to encourage themselves. It may feel weird. It may feel awkward. But I'm telling you, using different methods to encourage yourself over the course of a day will dramatically change how you feel about yourself and how you view yourself. Oh, here's the next one. We're talking about real relationship goals. Invest in thyself. Now, we know at some level or at some point in life, you have invested in something, whether it was your time and energy at work, whether it was time and effort in school, uh, whether it's learning a new skill or craft, you've had to invest something. And so one of the goals for your life should be to find things that you can invest in that improve your quality of life. That may look like investing in books. That may look like investing in a course. It may look like finally investing in that yoga class that you've been thinking about doing so that you can feel more present in your body. Be willing to pour your resources into things that will enhance the quality of your life rather than things that will depreciate. Yes, it's cool to buy new clothes. Yes, it's cool to have the newest iPhone or even to get a new car. But what do those things add to you in the long run? Our goals, we're talking about real relationship goals. How is what you're doing and spending your money on helping you prepare for that relationship? How is it doing that? Are the things that you're purchasing, the things you're investing in, are those superficial? Or are those things going to be things that enhance, make you better, make you wiser, make you more informed? Are these things doing that? Think about it. 
Think about it. How do you how do you plan to invest in yourself this year? How do you plan on investing in yourself? That is a that is a form of self-love, investing in yourself, being willing to take your hard earned money and put it into going towards something that can benefit you. Now, let's say, hey, I don't have a lot of money to go invest. Well, you can invest your time, your energy, the effort. That's another form of investment. It's not just money, but you can invest where you're spending your time. Take some of that time that you've been using to scroll through social media, uh, whether it's watching Netflix, to invest in. Go Listen, I don't know if people still do this. You can still go to the library and get books for free. It's all about whether or not you're going to take that time, energy, and effort to go. There are plenty of relationship books that you can get at the library. There are even plenty of online. Listen, here's another thing. The libraries are even digital now, so you can get it to your Kindle or your iPad. But we got to invest in ourselves. We can no longer just spend our money on food, spend our time on things that are not benefiting us. We got to invest in ourselves. And that will, in turn, improve who you are and can definitely improve how you show up in your next relationship. And the last one that we're going to go over is nourish. Nourish thyself. After you started doing all these things, after you started rediscovering yourself, after you started doing the healing, and after you've been healing for a while, now you start to get that, that boost. You're starting to feel yourself again. Now you're encouraging yourself. And now once you have encouraged, you're like, yo, what other areas I need to grow? I'm going to invest in myself. I, now that I've, I'm putting my hard-earned money down, I'm, I'm making commitments to invest in myself to be better. After all that's done, you got to be able to nourish that process. How do you continue growing? What is your plan for sustaining the growth that you have? What people can you contact to make sure that you stay in this journey and that you feel supported. Come up with that plan. Do you have a circle of trusted advisors that you can even say, hey, I'm on this journey. These are some of my goals. Check in with me in a month. See how I'm doing. You got to come up with some kind of process to nourish your growth. It is always amazing to see like how when you start growing a plant, especially if you do it from seeds, you cultivate the soil. You put the seeds in, you water it, make sure it gets the light. And when that plant actually starts to grow, it's one of the best feelings. It's one of the best feelings to see that plant start to sprout out. You start to see the flowers. But guess what? In order for that plant not to die, you still have to nourish it. There's still things that you're going to have to continue to do on a continuous basis to help that plant grow. The same is going to be with your own personal life journey. You're going to have to come up with a process to be able to continue growth. We don't want it to just be a blip in our life's calendar. We want it to be a, a whole season. We want it to be a lifestyle. We want growth and love and investing in ourselves and always rediscovering. We want that to be a lifestyle. Because you're going to need to do it again, especially as you go through different life phases where you may be single, then now you have a partner, and now you're, you may get married, and now children are there, and you're still going to have to do all of these things. So how do you keep that process going? Think about it. Write down what your process is going to be for maintaining your growth. How are you going to do it? Write it down. Keep it visible. And most importantly, come back to it from day to day. So that's that's all I got for you all this week. That is real relationship goals. You're going to be seeing it. You're going to be hearing me talk about it. Help. I'm going to start bringing it up with our guests a lot more because couples are no longer the goal. Our personal wellness and growth is the new goals. And that's something that doesn't need a partner. We don't need someone to, um, to, to get us started in that. It's something we can do on our own. And if nobody else shows up to the party, guess what? You will be one well-rounded individual, even if you don't have a partner. So thank you all for joining us this week. Please head on over to iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher Podcast, comment, rate, subscribe. If you're in YouTube land, please head on over 
to, excuse me, if you're a podcast land, please head on over to Love Us Script HD where you can see the full video for this episode. Also, go ahead and join our relationship community, Wake Up in Love where we have some amazing people who are going to be able to pour into you to really help you grow your relationships. And that's at www.wakeupinlove.com. Hey, we may not have all the answers, but we will have the conversation. I'll see y'all next time. Peace.